Yes. Come on and give God some praise all over this building. Oh, come on, let's worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Let's give Sister Chrissy another hand. Amen. Amen. It's a difference between performing and ministering. Amen. So we just bless God for her on this afternoon. Amen. Ministering. Uh, we honor the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. That is in this place. Certainly to our good friend and our elder brother. Amen. Pastor Carpenter. To his lovely wife. Co-pastor Carpenter. To my wife and to our presiding officer. Let's give our presiding officer a hand. My friend and my brother. Amen, Reverend Woods, and certainly to all of our our ministers, our evangelists, deacons, members, saints, and friends. God is great. You ain't hear what I said. God is great and greatly to be praised. I'm reminded in the Word of God where the Bible says it's just good to be here. How many know that God is raising up a, a new generation and they're going to know us by the love that we have one for another? And every time I come to this household of faith, amen, I thank God because I feel love. Amen. And, and, and it's just so good to be here. Amen. It is so good to be here. I'm not going to prolong things. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. If I can just call your attention to the book of Hebrews. Amen. Chapter 12. We thank God for our sister reading and your hearing uh, earlier. Amen. I just want to look at uh, that first verse. When you have it, won't you indicate it by saying amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads, Wherefore, seeing... We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. If I could just use a thought subject of theme for this afternoon, lay it aside and move on. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, lay it, lay it aside and move on. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God. God, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for just your grace and we thank you, Lord, for your mercy. God, it's preaching time. Again, God, I am nothing, God. I'm nothing but dust. I'm nothing but dirt. Hide me behind the cross, God. God, we know that words are already ordered in heaven, God, now as they're uttered over clay. God, speak to your people, God. God, we are a needy people, God. So, God, now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be of in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, praise the Lord. Come on, once more, give God a praise offering if you're glad to be here. Lay it aside and move on. The Bible makes it very clear in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. See, the will to do springs from the knowledge of God's word that we can do. However, however, Doubt, fear, uncertainty, and, the, and the, uh, disbelief can be roadblocks, obstacles, barriers for a purpose-driven child of God who wants to lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. See, I am a firm believer that the key to changing old habits for new ones and replacing failure with success lies in 
what we leave behind. See, in our text again, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, we read again, Let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, that word beset means to trouble or harass constantly, to surround or attack from all sides. How many of you are tired of the weights and sins that have harassed and troubled you constantly? See, there are things in your life that will limit your success, your victory, your confidence, your peace, and your joy. And I want to share with you on this afternoon, I, I want to share with you on, on how to lay them aside and leave them behind so that you can run the race God has planned for you with vigor and with stamina. See, before you can leave those things behind, you need to stop and, and meditate on this truth that God have a plan for your life. How many of you believe that on this afternoon, that, 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 that God has a, a plan for your life? Uh, the, 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 the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And, and in other words, like you said one time before, uh, 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 Reverend Woods, uh, uh, a future hope. Uh, hallelujah. See, see, he wants you to know joy. He wants you to experience victory. He, he wants you to live in peace. Uh, he wants to fill your cup with, with fresh oil, uh, with blessings that overflow that what God wants for you. How many believe that? How many believe that? And, and, and see, here is the key truth. See, you cannot take hold of the new until you let go of the old. Oh, glory to God. You didn't hear what I said. You cannot take hold of the new until you let go of the old. In other words, guess what? You cannot run this Christian race Looking back. No, 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 no. You, you cannot run this Christian race always looking uh, in your rearview mirror. In other words, looking back and dwelling on past failures. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 past mistakes. Uh, past relationships. Uh, a past divorce. Isn't it amazing? Every time we, we try to move forward, we're always looking in our rear view mirror. A past bankruptcy. A past foreclosure. A past repossession. Uh, past regrets. Uh, past opportunity. Guess what, beloved? For almost a decade. Look at somebody and say a decade. Uh, Yes, for almost a decade, I dwelt I, Andre Seals, I, I dwelt on a missed opportunity in my life, which was to go to college and play basketball. Come on now. And as a result uh, of me looking back and dwelling on the fact that I did not go to college, guess what, beloved? It was hindering me from fulfilling my divine purpose. Uh, it was hindering me from teaching and preaching the Word of God. It, it was hindering me uh, from uh, 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 seeing what God has for me. See, again, again, you must learn how to, to let go of the past and reach towards the, the future. Don't you know that there are ways that cripple us and keeps us from stepping into God's purpose and will for our lives. What are they, Pastor? What are they? Again, their doubt. Uncertainty. Disbelief. Being complacent. And settling for less. Don't you know that we as the people of God have to stop settling for less? We have gotten to the point that we settle for less. We settle. We stop, stop, stop. I'm settling for minimum wage paid jobs, making seven twenty five an hour. Stop settling for a one bedroom apartment. Stop settling for just a high school diploma. 
See, again, again, leave them behind, and guess what? Your future will be right. If you don't, guess what? They will haunt you. Do I got a witness in the building? They will chase you. They, they will hinder you. They will oppress you. They, they will terrorize you and torment you. So, Pastor, how, 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 how do I leave them behind? Here are two things you must leave behind to have the freedom to change your life forever. Oh, glory to God, to change your life for the better and enjoy God's very best. The first, we must lay aside all manner of unforgiveness. The word aside means away from one's thoughts, consideration. See, the word unforgiveness means to dispose. In other words, set out. And also it means to forgive or show mercy. In this day and time, we don't show mercy anymore. See, mercy is when you don't get what you actually deserve. And guess what, co-pastor? There's, there's been some things in my life I have done that should have brought immediate judgment from God. But instead of receiving judgment, guess what? I received the grace of God. But again, we don't know how to show mercy any longer. See, the devil wants you to be tormented or rather trapped by the things people did to you in the past. Can I preach it on this afternoon? Yes, I'm, I'm talking about people who hurt you. Uh huh. People who lied on you. Uh, people who cheated on you. Uh, people who used you. Uh, people who abused you. Uh, people who controlled you. Uh, people who manipulated you. Uh, people who bullied you. Uh, people who oppressed you. People who have persecuted you. People who have what? Harassed you. Guess what? Uh, I'm going to say something so, so profound. It's time to free them. Oh, you ain't here with me. It's time to look at three people and say, free them, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, it's time to free them. Hallelujah. See, some of you don't even know that you have an appointment with destiny. And because you have not freed them, guess what? Some of you have incarcerated your spouse because of something they have done in the past. Some of you have incarcerated uh, your children. Some of you have incarcerated family members. Some of you have incarcerated some of your friends. Some of you have incarcerated uh, some of your co-workers for months, for years, for decades. And the enemy, look at somebody and say the enemy, the one they call Satan, the one they call Lucifer, the enemy has been walking around uh, as the war and laughing at you with all that unforgiveness uh, in your heart. Can you imagine him as the warden? Looking at you, Shabbat God. Look at you, looking at you, praise him and exalt him, glorify him. And you're walking around with all that unforgiveness. Holy Ghost, help me preach it in here. In uh, your heart. See, when you don't forgive, he, talking about the enemy, gets what he wants. Uh, hallelujah, God. Uh, see, when you hold on to bitterness, uh -huh, when you hold on to resentment, uh, when you hold on to animosity, uh, when you hold on to anger over something that was done to you, you are opening a door for the devil to gain interest uh, in your heart. Uh, he will capitalize. Oh, glory to God. He will capitalize on that to hinder and ruin uh, your life. You are allowing the enemy to manipulate you and control your life. When you don't forgive, what are you talking about, Pastor? That person that hurts you, abused you, controlled you. When you see them coming, isn't it amazing how that enemy and that small, still voice 
people tell you, roll your eyes at that individual. Uh -huh. Don't you punch him or her in her mouth. He will manipulate and control you. Won't you just go up to that individual and cuss them out? And isn't it amazing how we entertain uh, that thought? Uh, again, you're allowing him to manipulate and control your life when you don't forgive. Guess what? Uh, we are the ones. Oh, glory to God. God, help me preach this. See, we are the ones uh, who suffer most when you choose not Look at three people and say, to forgive. Yes, yes, yes. We are the ones that suffer the most when we choose not to forgive. Now listen, when we do forgive, oh, glory to God, the Lord sets our heart free from the anger, the bitterness, uh, the resentment, uh, and hurt that prison previously imprisoned us. There was an offer by the name of Lewis. B. Smith. Smith. He wrote in his book, Forgive and Forget. And he said that, oh, glory to God. He said, when you release the wrongdoer from the wrong, he said, you cut out a malignant tumor out of your inner life. And you have to realize what a malignant tumor is. It is a tumor that is poisonous, uh-huh, and tends to spread to the other parts of the body and is likely to cause death unless adequately treated. Oh, glory to God. What you trying to say? And because some of us have not released the wrongdoer from the wrong, the poison from that malignant tumor is starting to spread. Oh, glory rapidly. In other words, guess what? The, the, the poison is killing and destroying our love. Yes, yes, yes. It's killing and destroying our love, our, our joy, our peace, uh, our long suffering. Uh, some of you wonder why you can't put up uh, because you have not cut that, oh, glory to God, that malignant tumor from your inner. Yes, yes, you got, we got to cut it out. It is destroying our long-suffering, our gentleness, our, our faith, our meekness, our confidence, our boldness. The poison is killing and destroying our marriages, our families, our, our ministries, our anointing, our witness for the Lord. The poison is it's killing and destroying our, our character, our integrity, our self-worth, our, our confidence. How many know that it's time? Look at somebody and say, it's time. It's time for us to allow God to perform emergency surgery to remove and cut out that malignant tumor from our lives and start treating it with the word of God. Again, 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 we are the ones, again, who suffer the most when we choose not to forgive. Hallelujah. See, you set a prisoner free, but again, you discover that the real prisoner was yourself. Hallelujah. And I'm coming to an end. See, you can't pick and choose whom to forgive. No, 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 no. No, no, you ain't hear what I said. You can't pick and choose whom to forgive. That's just like if Pastor and Co-Pastor did something to me. See, guess what, Co-Pastor? I can't say, guess what, I forgive you, but I don't forgive him. No, 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 no. You high glory to God. Hallelujah, God. See, you can't pick and choose whom to forgive. You have to forgive whoever has hurt you. Even if, especially if they don't deserve it. What you saying, Pastor? There's been some folks in my family. There's been some folks in my inner circle. There's been some folks on my job. There's been some folks in the church. There's been some folks in my neighborhood that hurt me, lied on me, that did not deserve my forgiveness. But because I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus,
Jesus that wants to live in obedience to the word of God, I got to forgive him. In fact, it isn't forgiveness unless it really hurts first. If it didn't hurt, there's nothing to forgive. I want to challenge you on this afternoon to allow forgiveness to become a lifestyle with you. It's time to lay it aside and move on. I don't know what your weight is. I don't know what sin is harassing you. But how many know that I have an appointment uh, with destiny? I don't know about you, but enough uh, is enough, baby. I got an appointment uh, with destiny. I want to fulfill my divine purpose uh, in life. Uh, Every gift, every talent uh, that God has placed in me, I want to allow it to beset on the body of Christ. Stand up on your feet. I'm done with the word. Lay it aside. 